This is not currently on my list of things that I have to do. But orchids, <laughs> they will do what they want and we have to react and respond if the need arises. This is my Rincolelio digbiana and you are seeing root nubbins. It's April, what are you doing growing root nubbins in April? I had this one not on my radar at all. But here we are, thank you. Thank you for being here as well, I appreciate it. And this has to happen today because I am thinking that I'm going to have seven days of rain coming up. And that's not good. The root nubbins are so tiny at the moment, which for me is a great time to go in and change her pot. If they get any longer in the next seven days when she gets inundated with rain, then there are abrasions and there's a bigger risk of damage than there would be as I'm doing it right now. So yes, the wind is swirling. I've done a little bit of a rearranging of the staging so that I can hopefully protect the mic. But I'm telling you, I cannot wait possibly seven days to get in here and risk those roots getting longer and I have a more difficult repot on my hands. So panic not, this is a good thing, this is a good thing, but it is a surprise because I have not considered doing anything to this orchid until later in the year. Which brings me to another point. In three years of having her, maybe now she's acclimated and she's actually starting to grow or a nubbin is swelling for a new growth already at the beginning of the season, which she's never actually done. I've been mentioning in previous videos that this orchid only ever rests or grows roots during the summer. Something happens in the pot that I can't see, but she only starts her new growths at around end of August, September, which for this orchid being a hot grower, I always wondered what was that about? She's always been a hot rester to me. <laughs> So here we are, my goodness, happy days. But you know, shocker because I was all chill. I was right on bang on schedule with everything that I've been cleaning up lately that you've seen in videos. And this one came from left field. So I'm hoping it's, yeah, it's gonna be one of those repots. Oh goody. Yeah, right. Let me see if I can't drop any lacquer beads because of a puppy right at my feet. We've got a big patio. No, it has to happen right at my feet. But yeah, here we are. This is going to be a cleanup of a cleanup of a cleanup. Totally unexpected. But you see here, this is something I see end of August. And usually my growth progress throughout the winter. So for three years, she has just been acclimating. Oh, goody. Let's get going. Stop yapping, let's get going. This is great, I'm actually quite happy. I just wish I had better weather conditions to contend with, but I'll do my best to not get a puppy yelping because I accidentally stepped on him to also protect the mic and give this orchid a good cleanup. Woohoo! I wasn't expecting this. Not for one minute. I was actually just um, replying to some comments on YouTube and thinking that, well, the next seven days, what am I gonna do? I won't be able to film. Oh boy. Woo, we've got issues. Hello. Yes, I'm glad I'm doing this now. Because I was thinking of putting her out into the rain so that she gets some good, nice water. But there's more happening here. This is rot. Woo, we are going in. Well, well, well. I am so glad I saw the root nubbins. I'm, I can't tell you how glad I am because normally you know, she gets flushed and then I put her back on the shelf. 
not expecting anything. And this was standing upright, but only being supported by lecker beads. Woohoo! Suddenly, I'm not as stressed anymore. I'm really pleased that I actually looked and saw the roots. That could have gone bad very, very quickly. Starting with the back, moving to the front. But we'll have a look at that. I didn't even bring my large secateurs out because I wasn't gonna cut into the rhizome. I was just gonna clean her up, pot her up. This is gonna be more than that. Oh, but you, I hope you can tell in my voice, I'm excited because that means she is definitely now acclimated and will behave according to what I was thinking would be normal. Here comes the heat, let's grow. No. And that leaf just fell off. Did you see that leaf just flying off? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to protect the root nubbins from any kind of lecker abrasion. Wow. Make sure that they're there. There they are. Here's a big piece of lecker that can stay, I think. Oh, this is exciting. Yes, I'm thrilled. Not so much about what I'm seeing at the back. But at the end of the day, I've got the sun in my back now and it's nice and toasty. Everything's good. And I get to clean up my Digbiana and get her set situated all ready for the long rain that we are expecting. Let me just get that leaf and see what's going on. And my secateurs. Check this out. Feels firm. Maybe it's just deteriorating from the back, but isn't it remarkable how a leaf can stay green whereas nothing is coming in from the bottom anymore? Huh. So let's have a look-see. Oh, there was something coming in from the bottom. It wasn't completely rotted. No, it was fine. It was just loose. There was still sustenance coming in. I hope you can see that. Still something coming in through there. But yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to do my secateurs at all. What I'm going to do is clean up all the inside fresh oxygen and all that good stuff. Woohoo! Oh yes, I'm loving this. Totally, totally unexpected. But we are prepared. And I'm so, again, so glad to see this now. Oh, and I want to show you my one repot. The roots were so good in the pot. All I did was aerate the pot by cutting off a third from the bottom of the orchid, but I left the microfiber, the old one, in because the good roots had grown through it. So this is my second repot of this orchid in the three years that I've had her. And I was not expecting to do it right now, but here we are. Let's go. Let's clean you up. And be a bit more careful about it because some roots are still good at the top as opposed to at the bottom. So let's just take our time and make sure that we do only cut off the bad ones. All right. Here we go. Brassavola digbiana is how I bought her, and if I refer to her as such throughout this repotting, forgive me. Seems like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I do try. The roots here, they feel firm. So it's not like you can just go in and say, oh, they're brown. I'm going to get rid of it. This is um, like a hit and miss. The really, really brown ones like these clearly are dead, but they are branching and all the branches are great. 
So this is going to take quite some time. While I do this, obviously I'm not going to spend the next hour on camera doing this, but while I do this, because it is so, so windy, I am going to sporadically keep spraying her so that she doesn't struggle with the drying out too much. Okay, I'm pretty much done cleaning this up. There's a few more steps I'm going to take. One of them is getting rid of the hard sheaths at the bottom here and let the new roots really get in. But I wanted to show you something and not me peeling the sheath off, but now that I've started it, I'm gonna finish doing that. I was going to put her into large leka because of this wet dry cycle about wrinkolalias and such. And large leka can help me tweak that, not that I'm gonna let my pot ever go dry, but it gives it a bit of a drier climate. However, I wanted to show you, look at the roots. You have the start, stop, start, stop, grow, stop here as well. These roots, they're not dead. They're okay, they're viable. But look at how the characteristic is as it grows. I had mixed leka, large and small, all together here, and I thought that was fine. What I'm seeing here now, for me, in my climate, it was too dry in that pot. These roots can't grow. You see how they would normally grow? Nice and straight and long. Once they reached even the bottom of the pot, lower down, look. Start, stop, start, stop. That is a sign for me it's too dry in the pot for this one. So I'm going to get myself my small leka. And she's going into a bigger pot with small leka. And then I hope that she doesn't have to worry about these roots not growing properly and healthily. Because there's no reason a root lo should look like that. And you can see they're everywhere. So lesson learned. I mean, I can keep flushing and I can keep pouring water in there, but that's not the point. The point is long-term, whether she's in active growth or not, that her roots have the opportunity to grow properly. And the size of the leka will help do that for me. Sorry about the mic. But it's everywhere. Far too dry in the large or the mixed leka that I have right now. I just wanted to bring that up and I want to see whether in two or three years we have a different result. I'll be right back. What a vigorous orchid. Huh. I've had her over three years now and she's gone from a 15 centimeter pot to an 18 centimeter pot into 20 centimeters. Happy, happy days. I'm still only going to add one loop though. I don't want to have two in here and small leka. So big pot, lots and lots of small leka. That'll give a lot, a lot of a wet climate in the pot. Let me get my cow mag in here. get that loop to float. I'm loving my little new floaty trick here. <laughs> I may actually have loved it so much I put too much in at the beginning. Uh, no, that'll be fine, but what we're going to do For one more final aeration in the pot for long term, we're going to just snip off the lower parts, the straggly bits that I kind of saved because I didn't know what I was up against in the pot, even though they are good roots. This root system is branching so vigorously and there are some roots in here that are from two years ago. So no fear of decimating the root system that it cannot sustain the orchid. 
plus new roots coming. And that gives the pot a great aeration. Well, I'm hoping for the coming two years, but at the rate this orchid is growing, we may be back next year <laughs> doing this again. But when it's like this, I'm happy. This makes me happy. This is a good thing, good issues to have when it comes to an orchid. Vigorous that she always needs to be repotted. See if we can get a stable surface going here. That's better. And we have our clear direction of growth. So that's also not a problem. And then all we do is fill her up. There we go. Lekka serving as a third hand. Perfect. Where are my new roots? Got to watch that. Really got to watch those. Because I will be pushing her down while I shake. Risky business, risky business. The other growth I could see was already starting on embryo nubbins. Cool, cool, cool. Happy, happy, happy. Let's get all this out of the way there. So what I'm doing here now is pushing the leka down around the back end where there are absolutely no roots and I'm going to leave that rhizome exposed at the end. There's no need to be filling with leka there. No roots, nothing. That can stay up in the air. All right, wow, care surprise of a day. So she didn't really need to be supported in any way, shape or form. Plenty of roots in the pot, but my problem is the wind that might be coming in the coming days would be a little bit more volatile and could be a little bit stronger. So this gives a little bit more support even though she doesn't need it. Those new roots that are coming out need to be protected. Well, I am so glad to see this one all cleaned up once again. It's becoming a regular thing, Digbiana and myself every year. And judging by what's coming, we'll be doing this again this time next year. But that's okay, that's the beauty of semi-hydro. Wash, rinse, repeat, repot, clean up, back in the pot, new media, new roots. Perfect, very happy, it was a surprise. We got through it and the clouds are coming now. So the following days, she will have rain, rain, rain. I couldn't ask for better timing. And for this orchid in my collection, it's a first that she's reacting like this. Happy, happy, happy. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope the mic was protected and I hope you have a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.